Thank you, uh, Deputy Boyd Barrett, for raising this issue. Uh, my department is not aware of a report by the organisation that you specifically referred to uh, in your question. And the organisation concerned has informed my department that it has not uh, produced such a report. However, the Irish Film Board and the Broadcasting Authority of Ireland jointly commissioned a report on the issue of training in the Irish film, television and animation industry. And the study by the consultants Crow Howarth, final report in respect of strategy for the development of skills for the audiovisual industry in Ireland, was published on the website of the Irish Film Board last August. And the report found, um, and I think you mentioned this in your, in your question, Deputy, the report found that the general view of stakeholders in the industry was that Section 481 was an ineffective mechanism to deliver quality training opportunities for the industry. It recommended a number of options, including the replacement of the requirement with the training levy, but stated that further work would be required to design a new mechanism. So the department uh, is, is currently working with the Irish Film Board to consider options in this regard as part of the overall response to the 14 key recommendations contained in this report. It should be noted that Section 481 tax credit system is hugely important in making Ireland an attractive location for internationally mobile film and TV drama productions and in providing significant high-level and high-quality employment in the audiovisual industry. Recent projects locating in Ireland include the BBC's Little Women, AMC's Into the Badlands, which returned to Ireland in April to film a third season in Ardmore Studios, Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens, and the hugely successful Viking series developed and produced here for the History Channel. However, I am committed to ensuring that any requirements in relation to training and delivering good quality outcomes for trainees in return for generous tax, tax credit provided by the government, um, that, that's very important, that is, that is in, in, in situ, and my department will address this issue working closely with the Film Board and having regard to the recommendations of the Crow Howarth report. Thank you, Deputy. I'm really speaking here on behalf of hundreds of people who work in the film industry uh, who, first of all, very much welcome uh, investment uh, from uh, film companies coming in uh, to this country, uh, making films, quality films, uh, and uh, creating employment opportunities. But what these workers say is that Section 481 tax breaks, and indeed millions that are given out in loans, uh, to production companies based here are not providing, as Section 481 uh, requires it to do, the provision, I'm quoting, the provision of quality employment and training opportunities. That in fact what is happening is the uh, category of trainee is being ruthlessly abused, where people, for example, could be a trainee for 12 years and never actually get permanent uh, employment, they're never qualified because there is no training structure whatsoever, it's just being abused. Uh, and, and the whole sector sounds very much like what's going on in construction because nobody is being directly or very few people are directly being employed, permanently employed, no proper training structure, uh, just a lot of money going into these production companies without actually giving the quality employment and training uh, that film workers uh, would want. And and that the Section 481 tax break requires is given as a condition. They say there's no oversight of this tax break, there's no governance, there's no enforcement, uh, and that as a result, anybody who, for example, asks for direct PAYE employment will be blacklisted, yeah. that there's bullying, that the Working uh, Time Directive is being flagrantly yeah, abused in the industry. Okay, so the, I, I would ask the Minister to look seriously at this and indeed to meet representatives of the film workers yeah, who are considered industrial action as we speak because they're so fed up with the situation in the film industry from Deputy Ray Bout and then the Minister and that's it. I was, <coughs> Sorry, I, was, I, was, I thought I'd hear from the Minister yeah. and just come back briefly. Well, Minister, you take advantage of my generosity. <laughs> Minister. Um, thank you, Deputy Boyd Barton, and Deputy Tobin. Uh, the, the, the report, I, I'm, I'm not disagreeing uh, with what you're saying in relation to the quality issues of the training which have been highlighted uh, in this report and you know it would seem to me that it, it was more of a box ticking exercise than anything else and I think the 14 recommendations ha have shown that and demonstrated that so th there's no question that we have to do something about it the 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 Crowhorth report um, 
and also the recommendations of the economic analysis, which was uh, commissioned by my department and the Department of Communication and Business, has just been finalised. And both of these studies will provide inputs for the development of an industry-wide long-term plan for the production of film, TV, drama and animation in Ireland under Pillar 4 of the Creative Ireland programme. And the issue of training, including Section 481 training requirements, will be considered in the context of this proposed plan. And I agree with you. I think that we have to make sure that, because it is actually there as a condition, that the project must employ a minimum of two trainees for each 355,000 of corporation tax credit claimed, up to a maximum of eight trainees. But we have to make sure that those trainees um, are looked after and that, that there is quality in relation to it. So I, I will be looking at this uh, in detail and I've spoken to my officials about it already. We know that production companies seeking Section 481 tax relief, they must meet a range of conditions and have procedures in place to ensure compliance before the Revenue Commissioners issue a search to film a project. Um, but I, I appreciate what, what um, both of these reports have found and um, I am certainly um, going to look at short, it in, in more detail and with the economic analysis and see what I can do. Thank you, Lassie Corley. Just a press for urgency on this. The, the, the workers are fed up. They are seriously considering uh, taking industrial action uh, in the near future because they're so fed up with this. Uh, tra trainees, yes, but it has to be a real... Uh, progression, right? And you can't be a trainee for 12 years. You might be a trainee for a couple of years, at which point you're certified, you're qualified, uh, and then you're uh, a qualified uh, worker in the film industry and should be paid and employed uh, accordingly. And similarly, it's not just in the area of trainees, but also in the area of people being taken on as contractors, a little bit like bogus self-employment in the building industry, where you're never actually directly employed. Uh, shelf companies are set up for the duration of, of the film uh, instead of people actually having some sort of uh, permanency and security as they develop their skills uh, and are paid and employed uh, with proper conditions of employment uh, that would follow from that. So I would ask okay. you to look at this Minister and to engage with all sectors uh, of those representing the workers in this industry. Minister to conclude, is short. Yes, I, I have asked my department to expedite um, the, the long-term plan in relation to this. And if we look at the summary of recommendations, in, 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 out of the 14, quite a few of them mentioned the training. So there's a new policy framework for training and skills development for the audiovisual sector. It talks about development and continuation of much stronger links between training and education providers and the audiovisual industry. At 13, it said a training fund should be established using an industry levy approach. 14, Screen Training Ireland should be revamped to provide real leadership and to implement lasting change with regard to skills development with the audiovisual sector. We don't uh, want to see any exploitation by anybody, uh, and I will be doing my best to ensure that that doesn't happen, uh, Deputy. Gromay, that concludes questions. Before we move on to topic, else, the Government Whip has. Uh